All right, so for this demonstration, we are going to be doing a wash. We're going to be doing a one color wash and then we're going to be doing a two color wash, okay? So first, what you need to do is you need to prep your surface. So choose a piece of uh, paper. I usually cut my paper um, down if I'm just doing an exercise or I'm practicing. And then you wanna make sure, excuse me, that you tape down that paper um, on all sides so that the paper doesn't buckle, okay? Because on gradients, you wanna make sure that the paper is not buckling. You want to have two water sources. One is going to be your clean water. One is going to be your wash water. The wash water is going to get really dirty really quickly. And you don't want to be pulling from that water to reconstitute the dry cakes um, of your paint. Because what will happen is the dirtier this gets, the dirtier the color in your palette gets. So you'll muddy your color in the palette. And then when you take it over to the, the uh, paper, it, you're not going to get those jewel bright colors that watercolor is known for okay so you always want to reconstitute from fresh clean water you never want to use your wash water okay if your wash water becomes um, rather opaque and you can no longer see through it it is time to change it okay um, so in this demonstration we're going to be doing the one color wash so a wash gives you a nice gradient from uh, one color to another. So whether that's from uh, the purple to the white of the paper or from a yellow or an orange to the white of the paper. And then I'm going to show you how to add a second color to that, okay? So if you wanted to do a two color wash, you could. This one, of course, is a three color wash. It's the same process. You would just um, add in a third color, okay? So. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to use a mop and we are going to wet the surface okay so then it has a little bit of shine to it right so that's referred to as shiny wet okay so that's how much water you can put on this paper and it's it's perfectly fine. So what happens is there's something, there's like a two-fold thing happening. The paper is, is absorbing that water with those cotton fibers. It's pulling some of the water down into the deeper uh, recesses of the paper. And then there's also water evaporating off of the surface just from um, heat and um, the humidity in the environment, depending on if you have uh, a high humidity for that day, it's going to evaporate a lot slower um, whereas you, if you have a low humidity for this, so like you know, Pennsylvania winters are known for being very dry, it's going to pull a lot more of that water off of the surface. So you're not going to have as long to work um, on your painting as you would on a, um, you know, humid, uh, rainy day. All right, so we're going to use the a flat. So whatever flat you have, you want to use um, kind of your wider one. So if you have like a half inch or above, you want to use that one. You're going to just dampen your uh, brush. And I always have a piece of paper towel ready. If you control the amount of water in your brush first, you will control the amount of water that you have on your paper. So you should always blot onto a paper towel. Okay. So then we're going to reconstitute our color so for this example i'm just going to use a um, ultramarine blue and i'm going to reconstitute that again we're using clean water okay and you want to put the paint on your brush so that you can kind of see it on there right you can kind of see it and we're going to start at the top and we're going to put a solid band of color. And then as we move down, we're going to start moving down. And we're going to overlap the previous band of color by a little bit. And we're just going to continue this pattern all the way down until we start to run out of paint. Okay. Now, mistakes that can happen. 
okay? Number one mistake that people make is when you want to add more color, let's say you want to make that darker um, up there, then you would add a little bit more color, but the number one mistake that people make is they always wanna start like down here where they don't have a lot of paint. If you do that, you will cause a back run. Let me show you what I mean. If I start down here, Okay, do you see what's happening? I put some water here. So now this fresh water is pushing the layer of pigment that I had out of the way and it's causing a break in that gradient. Okay, so that's not what we want. That's that's not a nice transition. That's not what we want. So we want to we want to start at the top and then work our way and then pull that color down. So we're pulling it down and we're using the water on the surface of the paper as a vehicle to get that paint to go downward. And we're using the angle of our of our paper too. We'll just blot that off. Like it never happened. Okay. All right, and that's how you do a one color wash or gradient. Now what happens if you want to do two colors? Well, you would do a one color wash, same as we just did. And then you would want to do, you would want to wet the bottom half here. Okay. And we're gonna flip it over and let's add a little bit of the orange here, cadmium orange. Again, we're gonna start at the top and we're just gonna work our way down. And we're gonna overlap a little bit with this blue. And we're gonna leave it at an angle. We're gonna kind of prop it up a little bit to allow that pigment to use the water that we put on the surface of the paper to travel downward. And you can see it is traveling right here. Now my paper's buckling a little bit, so you can see that wherever it buckles, it's gonna kind of cause a little bit of a back run to happen. So sometimes you have to kind of coax it. Sometimes you might have to coach it a little bit back into place. And you can only do this when it's still wet. And that is how you do a two color wash or gradient makes a really nice sky or background.